Every spring when the hop toad season open we use to form a collection of toads and keep them in those window holes. And occasionally, they would spill over into the laundry causing a very pleasurable commotion on wash days. We were severely punished for our activities in this direction, but in spite of all discouragement the toads would collect. And one day, well, I won't bore you with particulars, but somehow one of the fattest, biggest, juiciest toads got into one of those big leather armchairs in the trustee's room. And that afternoon at the trustees meeting, but I dare say you were there and recall the rest. Looking back dispassionately after a period of time, I will say that punishment was merited and, if I remember rightly, adequate. I don't know why I am in such a reminiscent mood except that spring, and the reappearance of toads always awakens the old acquisitive instinct. The only thing that keeps me from starting a collection is the fact that no rule exists against it. After Chapel, Thursday. What do you think is my favorite book? Just now, I mean, I change every three days. Wuthering Heights. Emily Brawny was quite young when she wrote it and had never been outside of Haworth Churchyard. She had never known any men in her life. How could she imagine a man like Hethloff? I couldn't do it. And I'm quite young and never outside the John Grier Asylum. I've had every chance in the world. Sometimes a dreadful fear comes over me that I'm not a genius. Will you be awfully disappointed, Daddy? if I don't turn out to be a great author. In the spring when everything is so beautiful and green and budding, I feel like turning my back on lessons and running away to play with the weather. There are such lots of adventures out in the fields. It's much more entertaining to live books than to write them. Oh! That was a shriek which brought Sally and Julia and, for a disgusted moment, the singer from across the hall. It was caused by a centipede like this, only worse.
Just as I had finished the last sentence and was thinking what to say next, plump, it fell off the ceiling and landed at my side. I tipped two cups off the tea table in trying to get away. Sally whacked it with the back of my hairbrush, which I shall never be able to use again, and killed the front end, but the rear 50 feet ran under the bureau and escaped. This dormitory, owing to its age and ivy-covered walls, is full of centipedes. They are dreadful creatures. I'd rather find a tiger under the bed. Friday, 9.30 p.m. Such a lot of troubles. I didn't hear the rising bell this morning. Then I broke my shoestring while I was hurrying to dress and dropped my collar button down my neck. I was late for breakfast and also for first hour recitation. I forgot to take any blotting paper and my fountain pen leaked. In trigonometry, the professor and I had a disagreement touching a little matter of logarithms. On looking it up, I find that she was right. We had mutton stew and pie plant for lunch. Hate in both. They taste like the asylum. The post brought me nothing but bills. Though I must say that I never do get anything else. My family are not the kind that write. In English class this afternoon, we had an unexpected written lesson. This was it. I asked no other thing, no other was denied. I offered being for it. The mighty merchant smiled. Brazil. He twirled a button without a glance my way. But ma'am, is there nothing else that we can show today? That is a poem. I don't know who wrote it or what it means. It was simply printed out on the blackboard when we arrived, and we were ordered to comment upon it. When I read the first verse, I thought I had an idea. The mighty merchant was a divinity who distributes blessings in return for virtuous deeds. But when I got to the second verse and found him twirling a button, it seemed a blasphemous supposition, and I hastily changed my mind.